Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast, brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening on a Tuesday. Hey, baby, how you doing? Super, how are you? Good. This is a fun story that I'm going to share for you here. A giant minion balloon somehow got loose from its restraints and rolled onto a road in Dublin, Ireland. Oh. <laughs> it's about a week ago. The minion knocked a side view mirror off of a car. Nobody was Whoa. hurt, thank goodness. It was a giant balloon well, rolling been through going the streets. Fast. Yeah. If a car got sideswiped, of course Jeez. it would. Think about this. If you hit a deer, that destroys your car. This thing is a ginormous inflatable. It's a balloon. Yeah, but it's a balloon made of a, a giant inflatable material like canvas or something. Huh. Like a big tarp. So uh, I remember a few years back, remember that big inflatable duck that I was moving around? <laughs> if you hit, if you ran into that with your car, it'd destroy your car. I suppose, yeah. yeah. So this thing is just as big as one of those things. So a giant inflatable minion balloon got loose and rolled into the street and caused some problems. A lot of people out there are wondering why in the world you were moving around a giant inflatable duck. Oh, and I'll never tell you. <laughs> <clears throat> it was a long story. Hey, <laughs> speaking of things I'll never tell you. And uh, things causing problems. We've got Tuesdays with Charlie coming up later in the program. It's on the way. Thanks for listening. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get razors for $1 a month plus a few bucks shipping so you can enjoy fresh razors every month for as little as $3. Learn more at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. You ever get angry? Oh, yes. How angry do you get? Oh, I can get very angry. I bet you've never been this angry. Have you ever been so angry about your carry-out food order that you call the police? No. That's ridiculous. Yeah. An Ohio woman called 911 to complain about an order of Chinese food. She told police that it was, and I quote, not up to par for her liking. That is ridiculous. I think their answer should have been, here are some handcuffs to wear for wasting our time. The police have way more important things to do than I deal think... with your food. You take that in... And you visit with talk the to a manager, owner. talk to yeah. somebody there. Don't. Why would you call the police? It's ridiculous. I really think that there should be a law on the books for wasting their time. Because remember, there was a guy a while there back. Be a fine. Anyway. There was a guy that called nine one one two hundred times right. in a day, and then he got arrested and he got to make a call and he and called nine one one. People are idiots. Anyway, this is uh, this happened in Ohio. A woman called nine one one to complain about her Chinese food not being good. Hmm. I've had good Chinese food. I've had bad Chinese food. The difference is not called much. The cops. So I've never called the police either way. Coming up, we got a fun story here. Uh, to, and be prepared to be freaking out. It's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you want to buy or sell an RV, go to RVWheelitor.com. List your RV for free. Learn more at RVWheelitor.com. Thank you for listening on a Tuesday. Prepare to be freaked out. Your private thoughts might soon be not so private, Heidi. Okay. Scientists from Japan and the U.S. of A. have figured out how to read a person's mind by remotely measuring brain activity, extracting information uh, of which the subject is not even aware. The study findings were published in the Journal of Nature Neuroscience. So uh, right now it's pretty rudimentary stuff. And it's like a mind-reading machine that only identifies visual patterns that a volunteer can see or is chosen to look at. But the researchers are hopeful that it will approach uh, eventually getting to the point where they could probe into a person's awareness, focus of attention, and memory. Hmm. So they want to be able to uh, shoot this little gamma ray thing at your head and be able to tell what you're thinking about. I don't like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I that's all about. I don't think that's right. I, I don't know if they're doing this so they could tell if somebody's lying or if they wanted to. I'm not exactly sure. The the Trying to see the positive side of this, if they were going to use this, maybe there's somebody in a coma that you can't communicate with. For you to be able to see what they're thinking or what's going on, that would be kind of cool. But I, it doesn't say that's what they're going to do with it. But uh, scientists in Japan and the United States are working on a way to read somebody's mind. Yeah, I don't... We've I, watched... What is that show called with uh, America's Got Ta a Talent? We watched that. There was a mind reader on there, but I saw how... I, I figured out how he did his trick. Wouldn't that be a violation of someone's rights? You'd I think mean, so. I, yeah, it would have to be. There That's was a, just not okay. I don't think these guys are doing the same trick he's doing, but the, the mind reader that was writing down what they were, I'm going to write this, and I'm not going to write this, and... 
I, I know how the trick works. Yes, I'm not going to share it because I don't want to ruin it for everybody, but I'm pretty sure I figured that out. Okay. I'm anyway. Gonna do, I'm going to do that at our Christmas party this year. Okay. I'm going to read everybody's mind. Well, I'll look forward to that. Well, this, this is a machine that they're working on, and you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. A flying car today, Heidi. Okay. Accident investigators say the car was airborne for about 150 feet. That's a long ways, by the way. Then it crashed through the roof of Joanne and Malone's Donovan's house in Deary, New Hampshire. 3 a.m. is when this happened. Driven by a 20-year-old woman who was later arrested for drunk driving. Oh, what a, ma- what a shock. Yeah, the imagine car, that. The car, imagine this, came through the ceiling and dropped oh right over gosh. their bed. The thing was right in front of my face, Mr. Devon- Donovan said. He's 65. I could feel the heat from the exhaust coming through the sheets. Oh, they're so lucky they didn't get hurt. And listen to this. Still, that was not enough to wake my wife. I had to wake her. <laughs> that is awesome. I had to shake her awake <laughs> after the crash. <laughs> she must have been tired. That would be you. Crash right through. Hey, can you wake up? Why? There's a Volvo on top yeah, of this. Yeah, that would be really? you. I should I probably have get to up. wake you. All right. It's your brain on drugs. Oh, your moment funny. of duh coming your way in a bit. This portion of the program is brought to you by Keystone Treatment Center. Addiction is no laughing matter. Call Keystone Treatment Center toll-free at 1-844-204-1055. A recently divorced man finds an unusual way to feel good about himself again. This is in Italy. He's 37, and he admitted to robbing 21 banks in a 10-month period, Heidi. Why? Well, he said... He wanted to take his mind off his marital problems and cope with his depression. He said, I suddenly found out that the only way to escape from the tunnel of depression was to have very strong experiences, and robbing banks gave me some peace of mind. Wow. Well, so he was like looking for adrenaline or something. I guess. Uh, I had a friend that went through a divorce and went like skydiving and uh, got a motorcycle and did a lot of dangerous stuff. So I could see where this guy is saying that by robbing the banks, it gave him this yeah, thrill. Yeah, but that's but breaking the law. It is. I'm I mean, not saying gotta, I condone it. you got to draw the line somewhere. I didn't say that I condoned it. I'm just saying I understand what he's talking about. But maybe he should just go buy a motorcycle <laughs> or go skydiving. <laughs> Something like that. Rocky Mountain climbing. There you go. Coming up here in a bit, we have your scoop of the day for a Tuesday. And Tuesdays with Charlie is on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your Scoop of the Day. Soon you might see cars on the road using prune juice for fuel. Have you priced this stuff? (laughs) Really? Bad idea. Well, it's better than drinking it. according (laughs) (laughs) According to a company in California, they're developing an unusual fuel prune juice huh i've tried prune juice it's better as fuel it is expensive a hen owned by a massachusetts woman who specializes in chicken rehab and rescue what she's <laughs> the hen is getting fitted with a prosthetic leg this week <laughs> at tufts university they're paying 2500 dollars out of her own pocket Adding that the alternative was euthanizing oh, the chicken, so she gosh. didn't want that. But this chicken had to get a prosthetic leg. This lady rehabs and rescues That's chickens. That's fantastic. I didn't know that was a career. I did So when not you're a kid, either. do you think she said, uh, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to rehabilitate and rescue chickens. Okay, but did this chicken lose its leg because they, somebody was trying to chop it off and eat it? I have no idea. It? I have no clue. doesn't say. It just says that she was... And where would bionic, one come across a uh, bionic, bionic chicken, chicken leg? leg do I don't you know. suppose? At the Tufts University Cumming School of oh, Veterinary that is Medicine. Just the That's the funniest find that. thing I have ever heard. All right. Hey, Pluto. That's a long ways away. It's 3.7 billion miles from Earth. Do you want have any idea how far that really is? I have no idea. Well, good for you. NPR, our boring friends, have come up with <laughs> the answers for you to make it easy. They, uh, they said, if you want to drive to Pluto in a car... At 65 miles an hour, it would take 
Six thousand two hundred ninety-three years I to get there. See. see, they do the math when they're not going on dates. <laughs> uh, fly- <laughs> I'm just teasing. I worked for <laughs> public radio for a while. I'm just teasing. Flying in a uh, Boeing seven 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 at five hundred ninety miles an hour, it would take you six hundred and eighty years. Now, if you want to get there a little quicker, the New Horizons rocket it's going to zoom past on the fourteenth of July. Well, that was last month. Gonna zoom past. So it zoomed past last month at a speed of 50,000 miles an hour. It has taken a little under a decade to make the trip. Hmm. So that's how long it would take. If you were jumping in your car, cruising there, 6,293 years. And that doesn't even calculate time to stop for the bathroom or fill up with gas. Yeah. So it would take you like it's 7 It's not a trip thousand. I intend to make hey, ever. Hey, you, you can't take it with you when you die, but that's not true for everybody. There are some who are working on a plan to take it with them when they die. Donald Trump is working on a 1.5-acre cemetery right next to one of his golf courses where you'd pay a lifetime membership of $300,000. And then if you want to stay beyond that, beyond your lifetime, and actually have your cemetery plot on the golf course, there's an additional fee for that. Would you want to be buried at a golf course? My, I personally wouldn't because I'm not much of a golfer, but my dad would. Okay. Now, here's the more important question. Would you want to golf at a cemetery? <laughs> I guess that's pretty much what well, this is. why not? Is. Here's the thing that's interesting. It's and I quiet. read a story. <laughs> the, the, those two things, golf courses and cemeteries, use the same type of land because yeah. they need to have, you know, a big space, flat, there's rolling There's no reason you trees. couldn't golf at a so cemetery. So, quite often, if there's a parcel of land that's good for one, it's also good for the other. Right. So, there are bidding wars back and forth. That I, I read an article like four years ago about that. Hey, for most people, putting on deodorant is a necessary ritual on par with brushing teeth and washing hands. But for those who produce no armpit stench, it's totally unnecessary. Despite that, more than three-quarters of those people still use deodorant at least once a week. A new study finds that uh, this was published in the Journal of Investigative Dermatology, for those of you who are excited to know. (laughs) They show just how much a person's daily life is dictated by what's considered normal. So there are some people who don't have to wear deodorant. I don't really need deodorant uh, i do i need deodorant and then like halfway through the day i need more deodorant <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately our daughter god rest I mean, god bless her she's god rest her soul what i happened? almost said god rest her soul <laughs> no god bless her she she inherited that from you and i feel so bad for her yes oh, she's my she baby just, she hey, just hates it you ready for a strange law yes all right before our daughter comes in here and kills i know you. strange law in eureka nevada men who wear mustaches are forbidden from kissing women Oh. No smoochy smoochy if you got a little uh, hair on your upper lip. That's in Eureka, that Nevada. That doesn't seem fair. Not at all. I don't think I'd wear a mustache in Eureka, Nevada. That's your strange law, and this has been your Scoop of the Day. This portion of the program is brought to you by RoughToughKennels.com. Dog kennels and accessories sent to your front door wherever you live. Your dog deserves it. Learn more at RoughToughKennels.com. Thank you so much for listening on a Tuesday. Time right now for my favorite feature of the entire week. This is one of the things that we do that I just really look forward to doing. Best thing we ever do on this program. We pick up the phone and we call my father-in-law for a little program we like to call Tuesdays Tuesdays with with Charlie. Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? Must be Tuesday. It is indeed. We got some exciting things to learn about today. Oh, yeah. I got I got a few more than normal here, so we better get at it. All right. Tell me what we're going to learn about today. Hey, did you know that the tooth is the only part of the human body that can't repair itself? I didn't. <laughs> I believe you've proven that theory. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> He's got a tooth left. Leave him alone. Uh, yeah. I got almost half of it. <laughs> hey, by 60 years of age, 60% of men and 40% of women will I'm married to one of those. <laughs> I was going to record her the so other day. Am I. Sounded like a chainsaw upstairs. <laughs> what is that? Do you snore, Charlie? Yes, I do. Nothing wrong with that? No, oh, it's good for the body. There you go. Hey, speaking of bodies. Yeah? There are as many hairs per square inch on your body as on a chimpanzee. Wow. Really? They just have longer hair? They have longer, yeah. Huh. So you look like a monkey. If if I grew my hair out, I would be like a chimpanzee. There you go. Well, I'm going to have to grow it out. There's an island in the Bahamas. We'd all like to go to the Bahamas, right? Oh, oh yes. definitely. Called the Big Major Car, as the locals call it, Pig Beach. Pig Beach? Okay. It's only inhabited by swimming pigs. Oh. Oh, neat. So them little <laughs> down there in the Bahamas swimming around having a good time. So the, the pigs are having a party and we're up here. Yeah. 
Yeah, something wow. right. Nothing right about that at all. Hey, then uh, it would take uh, about a million two hundred thousand mosquitoes to fully drain the human body of blood. So Ew. I don't think there's that many in my backyard. I'm okay. You're okay. They might make a little dent, but you'll be fine. Huh. I don't get bit by mosquitoes as much as Heidi does. No, I get bit all the time. I think it's because I stink. <laughs> <laughs> That's my secret. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, he don't taste good. Get away from him. Yeah, don't go near him. Actually, they like alcohol, so I think that's probably oh, why. That could there be. you go. Hey, did you know that your body has enough iron in it to make a nail three inches long? No kidding. Oh. Well, I'm, I don't plan on doing that. I'll keep my iron. Thank you. Okay, then I got one last thing here for you. All right, what's that? Rap rage. Yeah. W R A P rage is an actual condition when you feel extre- extreme levels of anger and frustration. Because you are unable to open product packaging. You ever had them? Yes. Every Christmas morning, yes. I've learned my trick now. I just have scissors. Because they have these plastic things that are melted together, and you can't They're pry awful. them apart. Even, even after you cut them, you can't cut them apart. Yeah. I just hack those suckers open. And I read a story that, that there's a huge number of people that get hurt opening yeah. those packages. Yes, there is. So that's crazy. They have rap rage. I do have a question for you, Charlie. Okay. I got a couple of them for you here. This one here uh, is from Susan, and she says, How many soldiers are there in the Icelandic army? 180. No. The answer is zero. Iceland doesn't have an army. Really? Oh. No army. Okay. So now you know. Let's invade Iceland. Yeah. Well, it's just, <laughs> yeah, no, who, what are you going to go there for? Oh, what do you guys have? <laughs> do they have anything? They have something. I think it's actually a beautiful place. I've never I been bet there. I it is, but I won't go there. All right, I got I got two more questions for you here. These are some that, that I had to dig up. Uh, okay. Kool-Aid is the official soft drink of which state? Nebraska. You are correct. Really? Yes. Why did you think Nebraska? Because perverts and old ladies live there. <laughs> <laughs> now, we don't want a bunch of people calling from Nebraska saying, hey. Kool-Aid was invented in Nebraska. <laughs> there you go. All right, and, and my last question for you, Charlie. Only what percentage of coupons printed are ever redeemed? No, it's six percent. So anybody out there that wants to give out coupons, just know that only six percent of them ever come back to you. So, <laughs> and I think that's a good thing. If you get six percent, people are like ecstatic. Charlie, what what area would you like to answer questions about next week? I'm very knowledgeable in everything. All right. So any anything at all you want to know, you ask Charlie. Let and her rip. If you've got a question for Charlie, send it to us through email. Send it to us at. John and Heidi Show.com. That's a long email address. That is a long one. Get carpal tunnel working on that thing. Remember, I'm only about three for 100 now. You, you've, you got one today. Did great today. Yep. Awesome. I was two, now I'm up to three. There you go. <laughs> See, you're getting better and better. Well, uh, we'll talk to you next week, Charlie. Maybe you get up to four. You never know. Bye, Daddy. <laughs> Bye, Fluff. Bye, John. Bye-bye. My father-in-law right there. We talk to him every Tuesday just because we can with a little program we like to call Tuesdays Tuesdays with with Charlie. Charlie. This portion of the program is brought to you by CarsForSale.com. If you're in the market to buy a car, truck, or van, find thousands of vehicles to choose from at CarsForSale.com. Today is a special day, Heidi. You know what today is? What is today, John? thought you'd never ask. It is Tuesday, the 11th day of August. There's not a lot of stuff going on on this list here today. i got another list over here I'm going to have to take a look at just to see if there's anything here. Oh, this one's the same one. Today is Ingersoll Day. What is that? I thought maybe you'd know. No, I have <laughs> I no idea. Know. Sounds pretty impressive. So happy Ingersoll Day. But it's also Presidential Joke Day. Ah. i got a joke for you. Okay. Why did Teddy Roosevelt cross the road? I don't know. To get to the other side. Okay. See, it's just like every other joke. Right. Just throw a president's name in it. <laughs> I got plenty of presidents that are a joke, but we're not going to go into that. I once was a president from Nantucket. No, we're not going to go into that either. <laughs> <laughs> if you do know a good presidential joke, today would be a great day to share that on Facebook. Go on there and share it, your presidential joke, and then let people know that you heard that on the John and Heidi Show. Thanks for listening today. It is Tuesday, the 11th day of August. This portion of the program is brought to you by StoneGroupArchitects.com. It's more than a building. It's design and function working together. Check out the project portfolio at StoneGroupArchitects.com. Improve your marriage by fighting? What? This doesn't make sense. A relationship expert says one way to improve your marriage is by getting in a fight. I guess I kind of do agree with a little bit of this. 
If you want to be happy and have to learn how to fight with your mate the right way, Dr. Susan Heitler says, happiest marriages are not the ones where couples never fight. It's ones where conflicts are resolved fairly without malice. The doc says that decades ago, marriage was easier because the roles were more defined. The husband was the breadwinner. The wife was unquestioning and supportive. But now most women work outside of the home and power is become more, becoming more of an issue, giving rise to conflicts that people didn't face back in the 40s right. and 50s. So some tips to help you next time you and your, your maid have a fight. Number one, expect things to work out. We do that all the time. Yep. We get in arguments. I expect that you're going to get your way. So <laughs> 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 Number two, uh. keep your comments tactful, not toxic. I think we're pretty good at that. Pretty good most there of the time. Some there have been some times. You've thrown some things my way. I've thrown some yeah. things back. Where we're like, I think everybody's guilty of that so to a certain extent. Do you really think I'm a big idiot? <laughs> and I said, no, I really don't, baby. <laughs> Number three, really listen to your partner. Don't just be thinking about what you're going to say for a comeback. Be listening to uh, what they're going to be talking about so you actually can reply and have a good conversation and then number four do not discuss important issues when you're angry so if you're in an argument you're having an argument leave it right there to that argument don't start dragging other things into it too right you know because that's when things get out of control so when two people are angry neither one is likely to listen anyway wait till you've calmed down then talk about the important stuff and then my biggest uh, it's not on this list but i think the best part is uh make up before you go to sleep you know, don't go to. There have been times you and I have had arguments, and you go to bed, and, I'm, and I come up, and I'm like, "Hey, I'm sorry." I know. Even I was though a big you don't wake dummy. me up to tell me that, but uh, you I do, do it too. before you fall asleep, so you can say, "I didn't go to bed mad, but she did." No, I come up, and I was like, "Okay, I was a big old dummy. I probably shouldn't have done that." I, I guess I, I did know that all that that food that you had in the fridge was for dinner. I didn't mean to eat it all <laughs> before you. I do dumb things all the time. So Everybody anyway, does. if you'd like to improve your marriage, Dr. Susan Heitler has that advice for you. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show. We happen to be married, and our marriage has improved a lot, I think. Maybe not. You looked at me like I'm nuts. I didn't know it needed to improve. You mean but, it improved just from this article? Yes, I don't think so. This article has been a lifesaver. <laughs> I was planning on divorcing you, and now I'm not. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi uh... Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by DirecTV, 1-800-259-7646. Also brought to you by RVWheelitor.com. If you're buying an RV or selling an RV, check out RVWheelitor.com and the Dollar Shave Club. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you for listening on a Tuesday. Hey, got a fun story here from Ohio. A fight between two brothers over a sausage led to a four-year prison sentence. What? Ooh. Yeah, Kenny and John Graydon, they've been drinking, of course. Of then course. John began to eat his brother's sausage, inciting Kenny to slash him in the face. Kenny pled guilty to felonious assault. So it must the have been best a, stories always start with alcohol. Must have been a pretty darn good sausage, I'm just saying. Hey, for those of you we who... We almost had an incident like that over macaroni and cheese the other <laughs> night with John and Taylor. You almost got girl. a fork through the oh, eye. Oh, I thought she was going to stab me. We had some uh, really good macaroni and cheese. It was from a restaurant. It really was very, very good. And I uh, I'd never had it before, so she had some. And I was like, that. She's, she told me... Try it, Dad. Try it. It's good. Try it. Try it. I was like, fine, I'll try it. I tried it once. And I took a bite. And I was like, that and is they good. Tried it again. So then I got all my again. all my food was gone, and I was like, um, hmm, you're not even eating your mac and cheese. <laughs> there was a fork flying right towards me. I yeah, thought for sure was I was going to lose a limb. Not a happy limb. camper. It was not so good. funny. Well, thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the program is brought to you by GunUp.com. If you're a gun lover, you'll be in heaven at GunUp.com. Built by experienced military veterans, shooting sports competitors, and publishing professionals, they have awesome stories and articles that are read by millions of gun enthusiasts. Check it out at GunUp.com. Heidi, have you ever dreamed of being Spider-Man? No. No? That, that Maybe that's a boy thing. Batman? I, did you really? I thought it would be awesome to be Batman. He lived in a big, huge, gorgeous house, and he had all sorts of awesome things. He had a butler, and when he felt like he could put on all these cool costumes and ride around in an awesome car and fight crime. That would be pretty cool. I know. Now I want to be Batman. <laughs> Everybody wants to be Batman. Well, if you want to be Spider-Man, there's new technology for the soldiers of the future that one day could use Spider-Man suits to walk up vertical surfaces. You could even stick to a ceiling. BAE Systems has developed a material that closely mimics the feet of a gecko lizard, which can scale vertical glass. 
The research is still at an early stage, but the firm says infantry climbing suits could be made out of the material, giving troops gecko-like abilities to climb up walls. That'd be awesome. Right. Now, let's get back to your Batman suit. What do we need for that? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We need a few need minutes money. to think about it. We need it. lots and lots no, of we money. We don't have that. Back to the old <laughs> drawing board. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Tuesday. This portion of the program is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. You can get razors sent to your door each month for just $1, plus a couple of bucks shipping. It's an amazing deal. Log on to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio to learn more. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Now, back to the John and Heidi Show podcast. Stressed. What is the most stressful time of the day, Heidi? For you. Oh... It Different depends. for everybody, I suppose. Yeah, well, it depends on what's happening. Okay, I mean, well, since we don't have time to think about yours, we're going to just tell you what it says here. <laughs> According to a new survey, commuting during rush hour is the most stressful oh, part of your day. No. Not yours. Your commute is pretty darn short, though. My commute is down a flight of stairs. You walk down from up there <laughs> to down here, and all of a sudden you're ready. Well, a survey into the most stressful situation has found that 44% of the people surveyed said that they it, they are so stressed out during rush hour, biggest inducer of stress. 32% said the most stressful part of their day was worrying about their kid's future. 32% said that. Don't mm. think about that then. And 31% said their job was the most stressful. Interestingly enough, most people said technology has alleviated some of the stress they've had to deal with, uh, with coworkers and face-to-face and whatnot. But they worry that uh, they're creating... They create... But the worry created by having to wade through scores of office emails has made it to the top 10 list of daily stressful things. So they're saying, technology has helped over here, but now I have all these emails right. to look at. Can't get anything done. So is that a good trade-off? Not really. Here's one of the things that I would like to tell you. If you work in a company where there's a bunch of people and somebody sends out an email, reply to that person. You don't need to hit reply Yeah, don't all. hit reply all. I worked in a company where there were like 40 people, and every time an email was sent out, Everybody would reply all. So I'd open my inbox. I'm like, whoa, I was gone for 10 minutes and I have 43 emails. What yeah. happened? And I start looking. I'm like, none of this has to do with me. This is all just people sending little winky faces. <laughs> Why are we doing this? I'm like, don't waste my time. Uh, I even tell people, if you call me, if you're calling my cell phone and I don't answer, if, if, you, if you just want me to call you, don't leave a message. If I see you called, I'll call you back. You don't need to leave a message saying, hey, I called. Call me back. No kidding. See, I saw that you called. it drives me crazy when people don't leave a message. If people don't leave a message, I don't call them I back do. on principle because so, I'm like, you must not want to talk that bad. <laughs> See, there's Tell me what you want. I'm like, I don't need a message saying, call me. You're, you're on my screen. But tell there's me what you message. want. <laughs> don't just expect me to call you. Well, then, I all of a sudden got stressed about this. Not a beckoned call, girl. <laughs> Coming up, going to talk about chewing gum, and it's an interesting deal. It's on the way. This portion of the program is brought to you by Direct TV. Call 1 800 259 7646. They have hundreds of channels to choose from, with many packages to fit your viewing desires. Learn more at 1 800 259 7646. We always try to wrap things up around here on a positive note, right, Heidi? Yes. We try. We try. Usually, sometimes, once in a while. We try. Well, there's a Japanese chewing gum giant. Lot, L-O-T-T-E. What do you think it'd be Lot or Lati? I, I don't know. I've never heard of it. Well, so. they're a giant chewing gum company in Japan. In Japan. All right. And they're now requiring new employees to go out and scrape up chewing gum around Tokyo. So That's they're saying, nice. hey, we're the ones that are making this gum. People are spitting it on the sidewalks. You're brand no, new nice. here. You got to admire that. Here's a little spatula. Go out and scrape this off the Toyota, or the Toyota, the Tokyo Maybe sidewalks. Maybe not so nice for the new employees, yeah. but it's, but it's you know a what? nice. It's one know. way to work your way to the top. Sure. I scraped up eight pounds of gum today. <laughs> I wonder what they do with it when they scrape it up. Do you think they, they recycle it, oh, and make it into new chewing gum? That would gum. be awful. A new brand, <laughs> the Taste of Tokyo. <laughs> The company says they require this because they are concerned about the environment and they want to do what they can to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. So they're already part of the problem because they create the gum and then they have lazy people that chew it up and make just people <clears throat> spit it, spit oh, it on that's the sidewalk. just ridiculous. I remember when I was a child, I would go to school. I know that shocks many people. Yes, I did attend school <laughs> as a child. Uh, I remember going to school and one time I dropped a pencil or I did something where I, I had to get on the floor to pick it up. 
and I looked up and I saw the bottom of a desk. You didn't eat any. No, no, oh, but I it was that's so where you were going. Not at all. I was like, oh, it was so don't disgusting tell me. how much gum was stuck to the bottom of that thing. Yeah. I mean, it was disgusting. Yeah. And it was a lot of different colors, and it, you could tell it had been there for years. Yeah. And I just thought, who thought that was a good idea? Sticking yeah. gum on the bottom of a desk. And there was a pile of it. Well, like I suppose if you were supposed to have it, and the teacher started coming, yeah. and you had to get rid of it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Swallow it? Maybe that wasn't a good idea for me. <laughs> All right. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in to a Tuesday edition of the John and Heidi Show. Time now for the bonus break. Only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. Your bonus break is brought to you by the good folks there at Dollar Shave Club. My new package has arrived. I am super excited. Maybe tomorrow morning I will shave with my new uh, double it's not double. What is it? It's four times. Four blades. My new four blade uh, razors. So I'll have to tr- I'll have to give those a, a little run through tomorrow. There you go. And then I can tell you how awesome they are or if they're not awesome. Oh, they're going to be awesome. The, the Humble Twin was good, but the Executive was awesome. So mm-hmm. I was wondering this one in the middle, how good is it? I just want to check it it's out. It's going to be good. Six bucks a month for the one that I'm doing now. Uh, nine bucks a month for the Executive. If you want to go on the cheap side, for 3 bucks a month, they'll bring you the Humble Twin. It's a dollar a month and then $2 for shipping. So all in, 3 bucks. Best 3 bucks you're going to spend all month. Yeah, can't beat it. If you want to know more, go to dollarshaveclub.com slash radio. Andrew Green watched helplessly as one bank robbery unfolded last month. This time, he had enough. Green was standing behind a man in a line uh, at a Riverside National Bank in Florida waiting to deposit a check. He thought the guy looked a little suspicious as he walked out, but... He thought little of it until a teller announced a moment later that, I've been robbed. As employees began locking down the building, Green bolted out and began following the robber, who made one critical critical mistake. He did not look back. The 47-year-old landscaper tackled the robber 200 yards from the bank. How awesome is that? Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't condone this, because what if the guy would have shot him or something? Oh, no. I love stories like that. I love the story. It's awesome, but I don't want to be the one that puts this in your mind. I would have done it. I definitely would have done it. I would have done it. But I probably would have gotten shot or stabbed or I'd have been winded when I got halfway out the door. So I probably wouldn't have done it. Or if you were carrying your weapon, you would have been the one shot. There you go. That could have worked too. Hey, Americans are concerned about poor eating habits. In fact, according to a Barna survey, nearly half of Americans are concerned they eat too much. And the rest of Americans just don't care. They know they overeat. They're just... They're just going to do it anyway. Well, not all generations are equally concerned. In fact, the study found that millennials are almost twice as likely as older people to express concern about their diet and nutrition. Age is not the only striking demographic difference. Practicing Christians, it turns out, tend to be more concerned about their diet choices than people who are non-practicing. So there, there you, you go. go. Although I'm a practicing Christian, and I probably should be a little more concerned about my diet because I don't really have a diet. Yeah. I eat whatever we're both comes my way. Awful. Mm, I'm, I'm working on it. We're going to try to do something yep. here. And we're going to wrap up with one other story. In Orange County, California, the deputy sheriff there, Owen Hall, was standing beside a car he had just stopped for speeding when, wouldn't you know it, he was shot in the leg with an arrow. Huh? Being a real man, he pulled the dang arrow right out of his leg and drove himself to a hospital. While he was on the way there, uh, deputies combed the area and found their archer, Tri Lamb, who had been practicing in his backyard. An errant arrow flew past his target, and shot his officer in the leg, so it wasn't intentional. He was arrested but went free two days later when baffled authorities realized that he had committed no crime. But the state's negligent shooting law applies only to guns. Mm. So you can accidentally shoot somebody with an arrow in the state of California and not be arrested, apparently. I got a feeling that's going to get changed. Yeah, we might not want to be getting that information I accidentally shot him with an arrow. Yeah, Yeah, there's an errant, I'm sorry, a negligent shooting law only applies to guns, not arrows. So The bullseye on his back tells me it might not have been an accident. We, I talked to our neighbor about an incident that happened with an errant water balloon and a police officer that was hit with an errant water balloon. A but sheriff. One of our neighbors here? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it truly, truly, truly happened. They have a water balloon launcher. Okay. And they were at a community festival having fun. And afterwards, they had a party at a house and they were shooting water balloons. All right. And it was a kid that pulled the water balloon launcher back and let it go. And it blew past the house and flew out into the street and hit a police officer that was driving with his window down. 
Okay. And it splashed into the into the car, and the guy stopped. And then you know this led to that, and one of the men from the party was arrested. Hmm. So it was it turned into a pretty ugly deal, but it was an accident. Later they you know discovered that there's no way from where they were they could have possibly right. shot this thing a block and had any accuracy right. whatsoever to actually try to hit the guy. Yeah. But it and, and it was nice because this officer and this neighbor were at the same event that I was at. That's how I found out about it. And they were talking and everybody was smiling, which made me feel good because I was like. Uh, a little awkward if you're going to be upset right now because this is not fun. <laughs> I like to be happy. <laughs> All right. Your bonus break has been brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. You can learn more on the old interweb at dollarshaveclub.com slash radio.